Hi friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day when he rose again. Christ has died, Christ has risen. Thanks be to God. This is Easter Sunday. Thank you for joining me on this Sunday, the 4th of April. May the joy and wonder of Easter be real in your heart today, wherever you're watching this and whenever you're watching this. Let us start our sharing together, service together as we always do with our gathering song. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. We sing together. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Gathering in this place. Now, truth to be told, we are actually recording this on the Friday and hence the weather is so nice, it seemed a shame to be inside, so we've taken our service outside today. And we gather to hear the word of God of this Easter story. So let us hear the narrative of Easter from John's Gospel. We read from John chapter 20, Jesus at the empty tomb and then appearance to Mary Magdalene. John chapter 20 from verse 1 to 18. Hear then the word of God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been round Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still, didn't un they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their house, or homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them all that, she'd, all that he had said these things to her. And we turn to read from the scriptures of St. Paul, Paul's narrative of the resurrection of Christ given in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 1 to 11. Hear again the word of God. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the Twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, 
as to one abominably born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. Let us take a moment to come before God in prayer. Let us pray. On this Easter day, Lord, we rejoice and give you thanks and all praise. You have raised your son from death. Christ, who is dead, is alive. We thank you as we greet you, Lord, as Saviour, Lord, as alive, Lord of all love. We thank you for that love that comes into our lives, that sustains us through the journey of our life. We think of the journey that we've shared with you in the last week, the joy and wonder of Palm Sunday, the depth of despair reached in the betrayal and in your trial and crucifixion, the sense of bereftness, the sense of emptiness. And now here on this Easter Sunday morning, to be full of the spirit and wonder and love of you, the living God. Lord of all creation, you made this wonderful world. You gave us stewardship over it. You charged us to look after it wisely. You sent your son into this world to teach us the way of truth, of love, of hope and grace. Enable us to fulfill that calling by preaching the gospel of the living Christ, by reaching out to those in greatest need. Father, we thank you for your love and forgiveness. We thank you that you love and accept us just as we are. You reach out to each one of us and call us as your own, that we too might say as Mary did, I have seen the Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Easter is so important to us as the very bedrock of our faith. We proclaim Christ dead, Christ risen, and ultimately then Christ ascended as well. But here we are on this Easter Sunday morning, remembering the wonder of that first resurrection, that first day Sunday of resurrection. You can understand the trepidation, the feeling of pain that Mary and the disciples felt. They, they were going to do something that was so difficult to see to the body of their friend who they had watched die on the cross. Their hopes and dreams evaporating like snow off a dike. And then when they come to the tomb, they find the stone rolled away. And when they eventually pluck up the courage to go in, they find the tomb empty. And here we have this wonderful meeting of Mary and Christ. She doesn't recognize him. She thinks he's the gardener. Lord, where, where, where have you taken the body? Just tell me. And then Jesus reveals himself to her and she recognizes him with the word Rabboni. And then, of course, she runs to proclaim, I have seen the Lord. Paul continues that understanding of the amazing reality of seeing God. His experience in the Damascus Road in the book of Acts, foretold to, shared with us in the book of Acts, reminds us of that awesome experience that was his, that transformational experience. And here he's now recounting it again in 1 Corinthians 15, the risen Christ who he meets, the risen Christ who makes him an apostle of God. I have seen the Lord, that echo that is made to Paul, that is echo that we hear down through the generations of the faithful who have known and shared in God's grace, love and joy. The wonder and joy of Easter is that we know that in life and in death we remain united through that gift of love. That in life and death we remain united through that joy of God's eternal promise. The happiness that Easter represents is of new life, new hope for us, us who are so unworthy, us who are insignificant, and yet us who are known and loved by God. 
That is the joy and wonder of the resurrection, that Christ died and Christ rose again for you, for me, for the whole world. And so we rejoice, and so we praise, and so we give thanks. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Let us take a moment to offer our prayers for others. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray. Holy and loving Father, on this day of resurrection, on this day of new hope, new love and new beginnings, we pray that your love may be poured out throughout the whole of this world. Bring peace in the midst of conflict, hope in the reality of despair. Reach out to all your people, O Lord, as you hear the cries of all who suffer, of all who cry to see where are you, Lord. May you be known to them. We pray for our own community. We remember all who go through difficult times in this COVID world. We pray for all involved in the love and care of others, especially within our health service and beyond. We thank you, Father, for our young people, especially on holiday at this time. We thank you for all who teach them and share with them in school, in colleges, in universities. Father, may the joy and wonder of Easter be in every heart. Father, we pray that you may be with us. Bless us and guide us in the journey ahead. We pray that the Easter glory may be shown to us and known to us and all whom we love and share our journey with. We remember our family and friends near and far, those who we maybe haven't seen for such a long time in person. We know how much we cry out for that familiar touch and that feeling of togetherness. And we pray for all whom we love. Father, we pray for ourselves, unworthy as we are, and yet still recipients of your love, grace, and peace. Father, in the silence, hear our prayers as we bring before you those we want to remember, those who, who are ill either at home or in hospital, those who worry and care for others, those who go through the pain of bereavement, that they may know your light and peace. And whatever and whoever we want to remember, we bring them before you now, in the silence of this time. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we praise you that your son who died has risen again. Christ has died, Christ has risen. Thanks be to you, O God, for in that resurrection promise, you give us the gift of eternal life. You give us the reality of eternal love. Father, hear our prayers and be with us now as a family we share together in the words that you taught us to say as a family. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, whatever else you are doing on this Easter day, may you know God's blessing and peace. May the wonder of Christ risen be real in your hearts. May you too share the cry of Mary, I have seen the risen Lord. Have a peaceful and happy and blessed Easter. Go now in the peace, love and joy of the living God. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon and dwell within your heart this Easter day. Remain with you and be with you and all whom you love and share your journey with now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, thank you for watching and sharing. Please stay safe and stay well. And thank you for being you.